Obsidian was mad cute. It filled me with so much wholesome energy that I was unable to go to sleep after watching it for the first time, and I'm still bubbly just thinking about it. I've been marinating in the tender yet vivacious sentiment that the episode was imbued with. Obsidian is a love letter to fans of Bonnebel and Marceline's relationship. It's fun, touching, a bit cheesy and schmaltzy, but in all the right ways. It has its share of sad and melancholic moments, but the episode ends on a hopeful note where you just want to kick back and groove to the beat of... All of eternity with you. Obsidian had multiple different elements running through the course of the episode. These intersected very nicely from a storytelling perspective, but for the purposes of discussion, I thought it would be nice to split things up. So instead of making a big review video like usual for my channel, I decided to make multiple shorter videos that will cover different topics. This video will be a lighthearted examination of the jokes and humor that either made me bust out laughing, left an impact on me, or that I simply found interesting. I'm going to discuss these in mostly chronological order, and let's start by featuring the first moment that made me audibly laugh. So bad at the coconut! <laughs> Glassboy trying to recite these weird historical song verses that we later find out have been horribly misconstrued from the original version, while that sinking realization that he seriously donked up sets in. Crack! I couldn't help but laugh. I just wanted to fix myself. Your hideous face has angered the creature! That line of dialogue was funny the first time, but after you finish the special, it becomes even more hilarious because it's foreshadowing. Limestone here was actually right on the money about Larvo's motivation. This thing really hates me! Larvo and Glassboy share a similar head injury, and upon seeing it, Larvo is reminded of all the shame and self-hatred he feels, which is why Larvo's Glassassins spend the entire length of the special chasing Glassboy's scent. Wait, do glass people smell? Whatever. I'll be discussing Molto Larvo and Glassboy in much greater detail in a future video on the Glass Kingdom. Something else humorous from the prologue was that Glassboy spent a whopping 15 days in prison before see-through princess finally decided to bust him out so that he could seek out Marceline. I will be gushing so much about how unbelievably cute the domestic life of Marceline and Peabubs is in a future video, but if I had to pick my favorite moment of the bunch and the one that made me laugh the most, it was Bubblegum using those souped-up electric hedge clippers to try to cut Marcy's hair. I was cackling at that. Now this part is technically not a joke, but I don't give a fuck. Those Lady Rainicorn slippers are amazing, and I want them! If those don't exist as official merchandise, they really, really should. The exact same statement applies to those Gunter slippers that Simon wears! I wish I could wear those! Alright, my lust for cool merchandise is subsiding. Let's carry on. The boy is none the wiser of my cart of illegal moisturizer! The rhyming non-sequitur joke of Chuskus certainly elicited a chuckle out of me. His appearance and humor gave me those real early season vibes too, which created this nice warm nostalgic feeling. Plus, we haven't seen Chuskus in a while, not since he was elementified, I think? So it was just nice to see his face and hear his goofy voice again. Adventure Time is often filled with fun little details in the background design, and I got a real kick out of this one. In Dirt Beer Guy's Tavern, there's a notice posted that says, Moderation, good for health, with a vexed Princess Bubblegum face. We don't know what the top part of the sign says, but I assume it's something like, PB says. This gag works on two levels because this location is a bar where there's consumption of alcohol, or the candy equivalent. All that root beer came from my body! So the posting is a reminder from Princess Bubblegum for her citizens to drink responsibly and avoid inebriation. The deeper level is that Princess Bubblegum now lives, at least a good chunk of the time, with her girlfriend. They now live in Marceline's cabin together. One of the reasons Marcy and Bonnie's relationship is working out so well at this current point in time, and why they're able to bring the best out of each other, is that Bubblegum has drastically reduced the amount of time she puts towards running her candy kingdom. Bubblegum has had a lengthy streak of overbearing hyperfixation in regards to not only what happens inside the walls of her kingdom, but outside of it as well. Not only was that obsession wearing away at her mentally and emotionally, but at times it was also serving to counterproductively push her own citizens away to turn them against her. 
This moderation sign metaphorically invokes this dynamic. Princess Bubblegum herself has taken up moderation for the sake of her own mental health and for the health of her kingdom, but also the sign contextually belongs here in a literal sense, because the location is a tavern after all. Absolutely love it when Adventure Time has little missable details packed with meaning like this. It is awesome. Ah! Uh, what? This is how I cope! Oh, please don't! I'm too old to die! Both of those jokes got me. Simon's silly plea for his life, and the fact that he apparently has a physical coping mechanism in the absence of the Ice King persona? This is how I cope! We don't have enough details to try to properly psychoanalyze this, but it's really interesting and super funny. At first, I thought when Simon said, I'm just gonna use your, um, facilities. I thought that he was referring to using the bathroom, but maybe he was actually experiencing an urge to bask in the icy chillness from Marceline and Bonnie's freezer. Something else I found really cute was how after Marcy, Bonnie, and Glassboy had already departed to the Glass Kingdom, Simon was still holding the toy Marceline in his arms. Like, Simon supposedly kept the plush as a gift from Glassboy because he clearly loves it. That's freaking adorable. Speaking of, I need Cartoon Network to start manufacturing this line of Marceline plush toys right now. Why have these not already been made to tie in with the release of Obsidian? I desperately would love to own one of these Marceline plushes, and I doubt I'm the only one. Come on, Cartoon Network, just let people give you their money. I'm trying to help you. <sighs> Princess Bubblegum's instantaneous change of clothes was amazing. I love ceremony. And then she proceeded to eat sand, as diplomats sometimes have to do, apparently. When Marceline relies on brute force instead, I'm not sure if PB makes this face because her diplomacy attempt has been hijacked into property damage, or whether PB is just amazed by her girlfriend's sick martial arts skills. Marceline being cocky is always a treat. By the way, I consider Cave Hag a compliment. After we get a flashback to the first time Marceline performed Woke Up, we get this meta joke. Oh, I get it now! That song's about her, isn't it? <laughs> of course, it's not even subtle. That's clearly a playful harking back to all the times Adventure Time had sapphic subtext bursting at the seams, because it was not allowed by the network to outright depict Bonnie and Marcy in a romantic light. It's so nice this show no longer has to walk on eggshells. PB and Marcy can just kiss now. Oh! That guy just fucking died! So the best joke of the episode, or at least my personal favorite, happens when young Marceline and her mom were traversing the wasteland. I see... something that starts with an S. Huh. Is it that scorpion? No! Is it that skeleton under the scorpion? The tone, the timing, the imagery of the whole scene is just downright knee-slapping funny. A strong runner-up for the best joke follows right after with the mutated dog that communicates by saying What's up? It getting conked in the head while yelping What's up? That was hilarious, but also made me feel so bad inside because it's an innocent puppy getting whacked. And then I didn't know whether to laugh or cry after the puppy's mother had its soul sucked out. What's up? It's such a fantastic attribute of Adventure Time, the way it's able to mix comedy and tragedy to this extent. I absolutely love it. This dark comedy continued with all the skeletons at the bunker Marceline ended up staying at. The Get Well Soon card Marcy made in particular had me in stitches. A circle of inanimate objects as friends is a pretty classic sort of joke at this point, but Obsidian had great execution of this format. What do you think, Lemmy? That was great. Yeah, you're so good at music, Marceline. Why is her mom scared of you? Where is she? 
That quick shift from Marcy's imaginary friends being supportive to asking the dreaded hard-hitting questions got me laughing and feeling sad all at the same time. You scare everybody away, Marshall Dean, just like your dad. Jeez, Marcy's inanimate friends don't pull any punches, especially that one with the animu eyes. At least Lenny and Marcy still remember each other after 1,000 years. What's up, Lemmy? Hey, dude. As a heads up, I'll be talking a lot more about young Marcy and her mom, who's named Elise, in an upcoming video. <gasps> mom? It's me, Glass Boy! Motherfucker! Glassboy's dynamic entrance, and all the moves he pulls off during his performance full of punk rock anger, gave me a good chuckle. When we get back, maybe I can show you all my fave manga. <sighs> okay, the Scorpion joke is still my favorite, but that line from Glassboy was the one to make me produce the most laughter. I could not stop laughing after hearing that. Glassboy is such a dweeb, and it's fantastic. I'd let you show me your fave manga, Glassboy. You're so competent! Yeah, I'm a pretty good stabber. Marcy and Bonnie are in love, while Bonnie and See-Through Princess are unironically gal pals. I love the little friendship that blooms between them while they try to find a way to stop Larvo together. Here it comes! He got really big! This gag felt really inspired by the sort of comedic reactions you often see in anime, as did the face PB makes a little later. Having that comedic style in Adventure Time caught me off guard a bit, but it worked well and I did laugh. I also thought it was super cool when Molto Larvo takes that form, which seems inspired straight from the gaping dragon in Dark Souls. I was actually rather bummed when Larvo put away that gigantic maw before starting to wreak destruction. But it was neat when Princess Bubblegum inadvertently gave Larvo crystallized root beer armor. It reminded me of this moment from Bob's Burgers. Okay, now the shark is electrified! All you're doing is making the shark more dangerous, Bob. I can say that, Hugo! Run to the bridge! Egress! Egress! That Hall of Egress reference was so darn unnecessary, but I still chuckled at it. What's egress mean? Exit. Princess Bubblegum's face when she conks her head was something I didn't know I needed. That's probably among my favorite faces from PB. Molto Larvo and his glass assassins metamorphizing into flying cat creatures reminded me a lot of when Gunter, who is Orgelorg of course, gave birth to that kitten love child, and I found that event way more unexpected than Larvo's transformation. However, Bonnabel coming in hot with the bloodlust was a very funny follow-up joke. Look, it's got a mushy center! Just like me. Yeah! We can totally kill it now! Peeps, no. After a bunch of crack jokes... You don't need to hide that crack. Ever. And this amusing apology... Sorry for bullying you your whole life. Glassboy murders three people by making their heads explode! You know! The last joke I will mention is when the entire Glass Kingdom saw Finn's Dongus. That man's towel just blew off. My bad. And I shall say no more about Grown Up Finn for now, because that's what my next video will be about. Finn the human and Jake the dog. That tattoo is incredibly bittersweet. Hope you tune in for the next video where I will try not to cry. Alright, thanks for watching, y'all. If there was a joke you really liked that I did not mention, which is very probable because this special was packed with plenty of them, please share what that joke was and why it tickled your fancy in the comments. I have a Twitter, I sometimes stream video games on Twitch, and if you want to help me make more videos, and maybe one day be able to afford health insurance, you can support me on Patreon, where you'll have early access to view my future video on the Stakes miniseries. And of course, I hope you look forward to all the future Obsidian content that I mentioned during this video. Catch you on the flip!